Welcome back to Rand on Real Estate. I'm Greg Rand on 77 WABC. How you doing, Laura Smith? Oh, good to be here as always. Same here. Hey, we have another call here from Bill on Staten Island asking about Phoenix. And we're going to go to Bill in one second, and we're going to have Joe Mendez from um, Long Beach just to hang on another moment for us. Remember, if you've got a question about a market someplace, either here or elsewhere, call me up. Let's do a little bit of research on it and give you an idea of how to go about this. This is a lot of fun. It's fun for me. I hope it's fun for you. So let's go to Bill on Staten Island. How you doing, Bill? Hello, Greg. This is Bill. Um, I'm thinking, not definitely Phoenix, but I'm looking for a cheap area like Phoenix because I want to buy some rental real estate, but I can't afford to do it here in New York or Brooklyn. Well, that's, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's one of the reasons why I'm sitting here in, in midtown Manhattan talking about these markets around the country. One of the reasons is this is one of the most expensive places in the solar system to buy real estate. And if you want to generate positive cash flow, it is a little trickier around here than it is in other places. So Phoenix is an interesting example. I'm looking at the 10-year chart of Phoenix right now, and I would think, if you didn't tell me otherwise, that I was looking at the Liberty Bell, okay? Picture the Liberty Bell. 2000, 2001, it shot straight up. It crested, and it shot all the way back down again, and literally, home prices in Phoenix are below, just a little bit, but below where they were 10 years ago. So why, okay? Same thing we talked about with other markets where there was too much development. The developers and the lenders and the speculators went haywire. They lost their heads in Phoenix, and the reasons why they did is that every objective analysis of the Phoenix market tells you that long-term, Phoenix has got an awesome future. Okay, it's pulling people. Like I bounce over here to that migration map that I told you about. Again, all these things are available at ownamerica.com. But the Forbes migration map, what I see is that Phoenix has been drawing people from New York, Boston, uh, let's see, Chicago, Detroit, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and San Diego, pulling them in like a vacuum. All right. Now it's losing people. There's outbound, mig- outbound migration going to places like the Carolinas and Texas and the Pacific Northwest. And I know why that is, because those are the places where the jobs have been migrating to, not just Phoenix, but other places. So people who went to Phoenix a few years ago for the vibrant economy, when the economy didn't go so well, they moved off someplace else to another vibrant economy. Very, uh-huh. very transient city. But the big picture here is that prices, th- the entire bubble has been erased. It's just been popped, okay? There's no there's no likelihood at all that Phoenix real estate is going to go very much further down. Maybe a tiny tiny bit just because of the artificial impact of foreclosures in that market pushing prices down, but I would sit here and tell you that is an overcorrection of Phoenix real estate prices. It is below the trend line. There's no good reason that real estate in 2011 should be cheaper than real estate in 2001 in this country. And if it is, it's because of something isolated something explainable, but something temporary that once it's gone, it's gone. So I love Phoenix because it's a great American city that's in distress right now. And that's what you look for. Professional investors look for great places with short-term problems. All right. Well, thanks for information. You got any other place in the country that might be affordable and good place to invest? You know what? There's a couple of others that I could throw out to you, like South Florida. Florida's got the same kind of thing going on where too much development, too much bad behavior by speculators and lenders has caused a firestorm of foreclosures and uh, negative activity in the market. But the migration patterns coming from the northeast down to Florida are unmistakably stable and permanent. I mean, 72 million baby boomers, most of which living in the Northeast, most of them are going down to Florida, but I look at the screen I'm staring at right now, and a whole heck of a lot of them are going to Phoenix also. So that's how I want you to go about this. Before you start going and scrapping around looking at properties, pick yourself a market that you can feel confident that because of population trends, job growth trends, remember, every human being that lives in that area is going to want to live with a roof over their head, and that represents demand for uh, for renting your property in the short term, midterm, and then later on when you want to sell it, folks that want to buy it and become homeowners in that market. So thank you, Bill. Great question. Great market to be analyzing. I hope you found this helpful.